Hello everyone. In this lecture we are going to talk about one of the fundamental char characteristics of uh, uh, logic programming, namely unification. So as we say here, unification is the fundamental computer computational mechanism in logic programming. Uh, and it, the, the solution of equation between terms is called uh, the unification procedure. The solution of equations between terms. Uh, in this procedure, substitutions are computed so that the variables and terms can be bound. And we talk about we talk about instantiating a variable. And uh, the co composition of different substitutions obtained in the course of a computation provides the result of the calculation. So we might be doing different substitutions over some particular computation in a logic program and at the very end the different substitutions will give us the result of the calculation. Now just to set the scene here uh, to get a feeling for what we're talking about when we say uh, substitution uh, or unification, we're saying that the solution of equation between terms is, at the, is really the unification procedure. So let me, let me start the prologue and just to give a ex simple example, let's say I type in the following query uh, f of x equal to g of sorry f of g of a now what I'm doing here is exactly what is stated on the slide I'm trying to find the solution uh, of an equation between terms so on the left hand side I have the term f of x where x is a variable because x is uh, capitalized and on the right hand side I have a term f of g of a and the the function of prolog here is to find or instantiate this variable x such that the two terms are syntactically equivalent so if I hit enter now prolog gives me the result x is equal to g of a and that's not really a surprise is it because if x is equal to g of a then the two terms f of x and f of g of, of a are equivalent. So this is really what we're talking about when we say a solution, uh, finding a solution to equation between terms because we have a term on the left hand side of the equal sign and we have a term on the right hand side. And during this procedure substitutions are computed so that variables uh, are bound or instantiated to some term. So here I have instantiated x, or prolog has instantiated x, or bound x, to the value g of a. And we, we might have uh, different substitutions uh, in a logic program, and uh, the composition of these different uh, substitutions is really the result of the whole calculation. Here it's uh, relatively simple what I have, and I only have a single comp single uh, substitution that gives me uh, the result. So uh, notice that I had a variable here called x and it's a variable, variable because uh, uh, it's capitalized. So uh, let's uh, discuss this logic variable in a little bit more detail. So a logic value variable uh, is an unknown which can assume values from some predetermined set. And this set is that of definite terms over the, over the given alphabet. So remember we talked about the syntax of uh, uh, first order logic and uh, earlier and in the previous lecture and we talked about one component of the, of the language, the first uh, order language. Um, and one part was the alphabet. So the set is that of uh, the terms uh, over this given alphabet. Now if we compare this logic variable to variables in imperative languages, in, in languages like C or Pascal or even 
object oriented languages which which mo many of which are are based on imperative languages let's say c++ then the difference is that well f the first point here that uh, logic the logic variable can be bound only once during a particular com calculation or computation so if in our example if x is bound to the value g of a then later in that same computation we cannot bind x to some different value now if you compare that to um, uh, imperative language that can easily be done with assignment statements you might say in a given program x is equal to 3 and then a few sentences la later in the same calculation you say um, x is equal to uh, uh, y where y is a variable so we have basically changed the binding of the variable and that's that is at the heart of uh, of imperative programming um, assigning you know the assignment statement and changing the state of the of of the underlying machine now the second point here is that the value of a logic variable can be partially defined to be specified later uh, what do we mean by this uh, well for example if uh, I might in a given logic program do something like this uh, well let me do it here uh, x is equal to f of y comma z so at some particular place in, during the, the computation I'm binding uh, the variable x to the term f of y comma z but notice that y and z are variables because they start with a capital letter and those variables might be later during the computation be bound to some value so for example y might be bound to a and let's say z might be bound to g of uh, w and what that means is that we are really changing not only uh, y and z but we are we are having an effect of the binding of x because it was originally bound to f of y comma z but after this we really have x is equal to f of a comma g of w because y and z was part of the definition was part of the partial definition of x but then later during the calculation or during the computation y was bound to a and z was bound to g of w and that has effect on the binding of, of x so here we can say x was originally partially defined and then later it was it was completely defined and this is again a difference between uh, a logic variable and the variable in an, uh, an imperative language because one cannot partially define of the, the value of a, of a variable in an, an imperative language like C++. Now the last point here is that uh, binding for logic variables can have bidirectional nature. And uh, what do we mean by that? Well, uh, let's say for example that at some point in a calculation uh, x is bound to the term f of y and then later x is actually so you might say x is partially defined at this point then later x is bound to f of a uh, so it's it's completely defined at this point but that means that uh, we have uh, bound really y to a so in a way that's uh, that's uh, uh, bidirectional in nature because uh, by binding the value of x to f of a we are having an effect on the binding of y 
And we can think of it also the other way around. When we are uh, uh, binding y to a, we, we are affecting x. And uh, th this is actually a, a, a very important point of, of, the, of the logic programming paradigm. Uh, because uh, it, it allows us to, to, to use a single logical program in, in quite different ways. Uh, and this helps us to use, for example, uh, uh, the same parameter as either kind of an out input parameter or output parameters. Now, um, talking about substitutions, uh, this connection between variables and terms is made in terms of this concept of substitution. And that allows us to substitute a variable by a term, as we did in the example. We substituted here a variable with a term, with a variable y with the term a, we substituted the variable set with the term g of w. So if we define this concept substitution, a substitution is a function from variables to terms such that the number of variables which are not mapped to themselves is finite. We denote a substitution, let's call it theta, by the notation theta is equal to x1 slash t1, comma x2 slash t2, all the way up to xn slash tn. And what, is this, what does this mean? Well, the x1 up to xn are, are variables, are different variables, and t1 up to tn are terms. And we, we assume that the ti's are different from xi's. So we are basically binding the value x1 to the term t1 or substituting x1 with t1, x2 with t2 and xn to tn. Uh, so if we have a substitution of this form here, theta is equal to this right hand side, then we can apply that one to a term to modify the value of the variables that are present there. So if we, for example, consider an expression e, then the result of the application of theta to e is denoted by e theta is simply obtained by simultaneously replacing every occurrence of the variables in e by the corresponding term. So we are replacing every occurrence of xi in E by the corresponding term ti. So let's take an example. Uh, if we have this uh, substitution theta is equal to x substituted with a, a and y substituted with f of w, and if, if we apply that to this term g of x comma v comma g of x comma w comma y, meaning this is the syntax g of x comma w comma y and then theta. So we are applying the substitution theta to the term g of x comma w comma y. Then what do we get? Well, we simply use the information that is in the substitution which says that x must be mapped to or bound to a. So this x here is bound to a. Uh, the w is not bound to anything in the substitution. So that one carries unchanged. Nothing happens to the w. And y is mapped to f of w. And that's why we get f of w here in the third part of this triple. So Applying the substitution to this term g of x comma w comma y gives g of a comma w comma f of w. So we simply 
replace every occurrence of the variables in this expression by the corresponding term. That's what we did. We, so we, we replaced x with a, we replaced y with f of w, but there was, we, didn't, we didn't replace w, w with anything because there was, no, um, there was no mapping in the substitution for w itself. Now, uh, we need to talk about the, the equal sign symbol. So notice that what we did earlier, we said something like f of x is equal to f of g of a. And we need to discuss a little bit what does this equal sign really mean. So uh, we can say that the, the basic computation mechanism for the logic paradigm is the evaluation of equations of this form s is equal to t. So s and t are terms and the equal sign or the equal operator is a predicate symbol which is interpreted as syntactic equality. So I have a term on the left hand side and I have a term on the right hand side and I want the two terms to be syntactically equal. So this is definitely not the same as assignment in uh, in an imperative language. We are not assigning the value of uh, some expression to a variable on the left hand side where the variable stands for some memory location. This is totally different. This is purely syntactic equality. And uh, notice that this is what we did earlier. If I turn this uh, uh, around and I say f of g of a is equal to f of x, then I get the same result. So this would not be possible. I would not get the same result if I was using a, a, an assignment statement in an imperative language. So here you can definitely see that the equal sign operator in a logic programming language like Prolog is definitely not the same as the, the assignment operator in an imperative language. Uh, so if we write x is equal to a, or a is equal to x, as I did when I turned it around, if we write this in a logic program, we mean that the variable x must be bound to the constant a. And therefore the substitution x slash a therefore constitutes a solution to this equation. Notice that if I simply type this in, x is equal to a, I just give get back x is equal to a, so this is true. And uh, as, a, uh, as a result from this, notice if I do 3 equal 2 plus 1, what do I get? Maybe surprisingly I get false. But if you think about it, it it's not so surprising because this equal sign here it denotes uh, uh, it, we interpret it as syntactic equality i'm asking is 3 syntactically equivalent to 2 plus 1 no it's not because the term 3 on the left hand side is different from the term 2 plus 1 notice that it's even not clear in this context that plus is the arithmetic plus here the meaning of plus is not uh, uh, it's not clear uh, that the meaning of plus is always arithmetic plus. It depends on the context, it depends on the meaning that I as a programmer want to give to it. So there is no way that Prolog can uh, unify these two terms, make the term 3 be equal to the term 2 plus 1, because all of the um, symbols here in these two terms are constants and there is no variable. So, uh, okay, let's actually have a break here before we continue.